Patty Brennan has shown the power of working across boundaries in science and engineering and all of the great advances come at those intersections. She has really pushed the informatics community to think about individuals and caregivers in a different way. I think Patty's a great example of if you just keep your eye on patient care, if you just do the right thing by our fellow citizens, good things happen. Dr. Brennan is a pioneer, and she's made a, a lasting impression on healthcare and biomedicine. Her work involves a skilled integration of disciplines in ways that have been transformative. Patty has combined what she learned as both a critical care and a psych mental health nurse with her engineering background. But everything that she's done um, through the years really has been approached from a very holistic uh, nursing perspective. Most of the projects that I developed had to do with improving people's ability to live at home, take care of themselves, reduce their sense of being alone, provide professional support when it was needed, and make use of, as much as possible, existing technologies. Early on, she was one of the first people to take advantage of uh, the internet, and this was in the years before there was a World Wide Web, and to use that technology to focus on both decision support and social support for caregivers of those who were living with dementia and also persons living with HIV AIDS. She applied the principles of user-centered design at a large scale to bring together patients, families, and disciplines including art, architecture, uh, biomedicine, uh, design, engineering, and health. And these teams um, built visions of how individuals wanted to interact in the digital world. And these visions have since come to life in what we think of as mobile health and the end of one uh, citizen science. What I, I was experiencing in the 90s was this sense from clinicians of, oh my God, I'm so busy, don't let them bring me any web printouts or don't have them sending me email. And they missed the idea that health it, it happens every day. It doesn't happen just in the clinic. The idea of showing a trajectory of a health problem, the points along the health trajectory where professionals are encountered, and the white space in between. This is what we call the care between the care. This is where people live every day and our job as, as the future designers of a health system are to not only think about how we provide care to people when they're in front of us, but how we provide care when it's between the care visit. The effect that Patty has on health care is really both in the kinds of work that she's undertaken, but more importantly how she's affected and trained the many people who've had the opportunity to work with her over the years. My lab was always a mixed group of people, other disciplines, physicians, psychiatrists, uh, social workers involved with this, but mostly we had engineering and nursing. It was actually a great asset for anybody in engineering to try to get into healthcare if you don't interact with folks with a clinical background and you don't interact directly with um, the healthcare delivery system, how are you actually gonna learn how to apply tools from engineering to solve healthcare problems? One of the things that was so exciting for me to hear one day, one of the engineering students was giving a research seminar and um, he was explaining a health problem and they were trying to figure out how to address this problem and he said, and then we got stuck so we asked the nurses this particular question. And, and what was so great about that was that I, we were taking a generation of engineers and having them see that, that healthcare requires a whole team. The 21st Century National Library of Medicine will see itself as an information source for the world population. I think it probably uh, is a, an enormous evolutionary step of, of great value, and I think Patty just brings this one step higher. I 
Patricia Flatley Brennan, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. It is as, as surprising to me as to anyone in the country that I'm the director of the National Library of Medicine right now. I had a whole different future plan for myself, one that was frankly much more motivated by my personal passions for safe housing and secure food for everyone in the world. And that's where I was gonna spend my next phase of my career. The opportunity to direct the National Library of Medicine, building on the great advances that Dr. Lindbergh and Betsy Humphreys provided for us, was something too great to pass on. The possibility of characterizing health broader than biomedical domains, including health, lifestyle, including uh, social interactions, including sense of well-being. Realizing that information alone doesn't make people's lives better, but pathways to information, research about how to best use it and integrate it into policy, and tools to make it visible to people would make it work. So I could bring my understanding over the years of health and the everyday experience of people's lives into the framing of a library that became a part of the everyday experience of people's lives, whether they be a scientist, a patient, a mom. Hi, my name is Connor Murphy, and I'm 11 years old, and I'm going to be today interviewing my mom. When, when my son was 11 years old, StoryCorps came to Madison. One of his questions was, what do you want to be known for? Now, when a kid asks him, Mom, what do you want to be known for? I'm thinking, I'm an academic. I want to be known for, what do you want to be known for? So what I want to be known for is a career that focused on taking what we know in biomedical informatics and expanding the, the user group, the stakeholder group, to patients and families, to make these amazing tools that we're investing in, technologies, terminologies, interfaces, and, and make sure that we remember the most important person in the healthcare process is the patient.